there is one comment that has continually ruled the comment section this year and that is the price of all the new releases being too high and that means there is a danger that golf becomes less affordable for the masses or does it but the question remains are there still golf clubs out there that represent value but without a compromise in terms of performance Based on that drive, the simple answer is yes. And whilst there mightn't be a compromise in overall performance, there may be some limitations. So in today's video, we're gonna have a look at a driver that falls exactly into that category. But those limitations, let's start with those because whilst you've only got one loft option, you've got two length of shaft options and you've got three flex options. Right, so let's start with the loft. Well, it's a 10 degree driver head. You've then got two length of shaft options which is either 43 inches or 45 and then the three flexes I referred to are light regular and stiff the driver is assembled in France it's from the Inesis brand and it's sold exclusively through Decathlon stores it is the Inesis 900 so first of all let's take a little bit of a look at this thing I let you know what I think but maybe more importantly what do you right first point to note and it's not going to affect performance of the driver one bit so ever is the actual head cover which is decent quality to be fair I like it it goes on and off the driver head nice and easy so I'll give it a thumbs up there and we start off with shelf appeal and that basically means looking at the underneath of the golf club that you never actually see at a dress when playing the game but it's minimalistic in its design and it's uh, I think it's quite a cool looking driver to be honest with you like I said they've um, they've mixed up that sort of gloss and matte finish there's two weight ports which we'll talk about very very shortly and that's it you'll see the loft again near to that heel area and then onto the crown and it's very much a classic shaped driver high gloss finish little bit of a chevron type marking at the front there which highlights the sort of center of the club face but like I said it's not been a lot of drivers have been elongated and squashed down I would very much put this into a sort of traditional like driver shape just to mention on those weights they're two weights you've got 14 grams and then you've also got a four gram weight which are interchangeable basically you shove the heavier weight at the back if you want uh, the most forgiving setting the highest MOI and the bit that will help you launch the ball and then vice versa if you want the lower spinning model then shove that 14 gram weight behind the club face and uh, stick the four gram weight at the back it's very much principle that we've seen before in many many drivers the shots you've seen me hit so far uh, or about to see the second one at least is with the weight at the back and I will switch that up later on and see how much difference I can notice when I've got that four gram weight at the back so from a looks perspective I think they've got a good looking driver here very minimalistic very modern in its styling gets a thumbs up from me but more importantly what do you think it looks like So second drive of the day and there's one thing that is very noticeable and that is that this thing launches the ball incredibly high at least based on those two but I've also collected some dry ball data earlier on this morning and that seems to be a running theme but the interesting thing about the data will come later on in this video and it's well worth sticking around for and the other thing we need to mention is that price point. Right so before I hit my third drive of the day I just want to quickly reference the shaft the UST shafts which we all know can produce you some uh, well decent quality and well respected shaft options but like I said there are just three but that's it my third drive of the day first two so far I'm pretty impressed with this thing right so third drive and exactly the same thing for me a real high launching ball don't forget I've got that weight setting right at the very back that 14 gram and for me it's just hovering a little bit it's launching a little bit too high I'm going to swap that weight port around and see if we can make any sort of difference in terms of that ball fright and then maybe visibly out here on the golf course see a lower spinning ball as well that would be certainly interesting for me on a personal level so before we go any further I think I should let you into that secret in terms of that dry ball data because it was 
really interesting uh, in terms of its overall performance, but also its consistency of performance, which is the kind of things that I would question when you start to spend less money, less expensive products, are the compromises in performance going to be really obvious? And no, they weren't. I'll put this dry ball data in front of you now, first of all, in terms of the averages. What you're seeing there is a uh, first swings of the morning, 91 mile an hour club head speed, which is fairly steady, but also I think very representative about what a lot of you might be swinging driver at. Um, we've got a 135 on average ball speed, two and a half thousand revs of spin, a 17.2 launch angle, and an overall carry distance of 227. Now, there's an interesting number that I don't normally put on screen, and that is the smash factor. And basically, that's relative club head speed to ball speed, and just is the driver optimizing in terms of performance? I suppose that's the way I would explain it. And it does exactly that, that 1.49 average smash factor is an incredibly impressive number. But then if you see the shots that I recorded on screen, I'll go through each one of them, they were all in and around that 1.5, which basically means that at the club head speed that I'm swinging at, I'm getting optimal performance in terms of ball speeds achieved. That's really, really impressive first and foremost. But then that spin number doesn't go too high, which is perhaps something I would have expected to have seen, especially when you look at how high the ball was launching, which was near 18 degrees. Now for me personally, that launch angle with the 14 gram weight at the back, by the way, is when, these, um, when this data was collected, that was the setting. That launch angle is too high, but if we can bring down that launch angle and then maintain that spin number, we're probably gonna get a little bit extra in terms of carry distance, and we've now got a really good performing driver. The question is, can we do that by just simply switching up that weight? Okay, so we've got a driver that in my opinion looks good. We've got one that has performed well both here out on the course and in terms of dry ball data. So it goes back to that thing about price point and the compromises we're making and still can you buy a driver in 2023 that performs well at a good price point. This driver comes in at 290 euros. Now, if it's going to be a standard conversion into UK pounds, and that could be a 250, 260 pound driver, which makes it half price of some of the leading brands. So now you know the price point, now you've seen the data in terms of my performance and the on-course performance, and you've seen how it looks, is that now going to appeal to you? And are you going to consider giving this one a go? Right, so first drive with the attempted four gram at the weight back, then you'll see that it really changed the ball flight. I think subconsciously, it was a little more extra effort from me as well to sort of flight that down a little bit because what I effectively done is got the ball flight completely different but also smothered it a bit down that left hand side so hard to say from that driver though yes the ball flight was very different it also went a heck of a long way but then on the next hole a much more realistic swing similar to my normal swing if you like and again ball flight changed visibly a lot lower in terms of launch but maybe more importantly it felt as though that ball was spinning and kicking on and again down the fairway it had really gone into what was a long drive to be honest with you and i say that with a little bit of uh, surprise because i think you can't deny the fact that when you come and bring a product out to test that doesn't carry the premium price tag then you are expecting it maybe not to perform as good but it really has and I don't know what that is. Is that the fifth drive we've hit so far? Fourth drive, whatever it is. Every one of them has been really impressive in terms of what it has intended to do in terms of that weighting system. So to get those two now going with a slightly lower ball flight, I've got to say it's really performed well. And the bit that I haven't talked about yet is just how good this thing feels. Oh, do you know what? That's a solid ball. And again, got that ball flight really where I want it now. That tweak of the weight, you know, it's so impressive to think that just 10 grams of weight shifted from front to back can make such a difference. But again, into the windy, a much more penetrating ball flight, really like what that did. But just to reference that sound again, because this is the last drive I'm gonna hit on this video. Sound and feel is really good. It plays a major part in my decision-making process. And again, the things that I would question in terms of that compromise, and it's not the case whatsoever. It's one of my favorite sounding drivers, if anything. And that coupled with that traditional shape, minimalistic look, I think it's a really, really good driver. I, I, you know, I, I can't, I said to Hannah off camera, I'm a little bit shocked in many ways and I've made a great deal of noise in terms of how good I think it is, but it has been 
a really impressive performer. Go back to that dry ball data, the consistency of the data. It's hard to knock it. And then you couple it with that price point and you've got to say that the initial thing was everybody complains that golf is too expensive and in many ways and for many brands yes it is and if you don't want to pay that premium price then there are options out there but sometimes there are a lot of compromises made and i don't think with this driver there are too many providing you can get yourself to fit in one of those shaft options and loft options then i think it could be a real good choice for golfers who are wanting a decent bit of quality and don't want to pay that premium price and there's one caveat to all of that and that is that can i get a better performing driver that meets all the parameters that i want from another brand at a premium price the answer is yes i can there's definitely more options from other brands in terms of that custom fit so i would never jump from one extreme to the other there are definitely advantages of having more options in terms of shaft in terms of loft all those other things that go into custom fit but for many many golfers out there this is perfectly adequate at a price point that is far more appealing than those high market brands are charging right now oh that makes all sense as ever thank you for watching let me know if by seeing what you've seen in this video in terms of data and the looks of this new driver are you going to give it a try for yourselves that's me done i don't think i've uh, hit six consistent drives so well in quite some time so i'll pack it in there i think thanks for watching and i'll see you all tomorrow night